Possibly the most valuable feature of a relational database is that when you make a change over in one area, it affects everything it's connected to. But other times, you don't want that functionality. Sometimes you want to be able to access your historical data. If that's of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I am the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate your business and life. If that's of interest and you want to learn more about how we do that, swing by our website and don't miss out on our free Airtable crash course. It's going to help you get up to speed quickly and easily in Airtable. But without further ado, let's jump into the heart of today's video. And it's all about getting snapshots of historical data so that you can always refer back to the status or the quantity or the whatever of your database at a point in time. Now, I'm not talking about Airtable's traditional snapshots. I'm not talking about backing your data up in any other kind of, you know, uh, database backup or anything like that. All we're doing here is taking snapshots of specific data points and memorializing them so that we have access to them over time. So let's just jump into our example here. And this might look familiar. It's a, a play on a, a previous database that we've showcased before. And really it's all about inventory. So if you have any kind of you know, parts, inventory, any kind of sales, then you very likely have some variation of this in your business. So we've got our parts and here I'm, I'm imagining I've got you know, table tops and seats and legs. And then those parts we attach to the bill of materials, which helps us understand how we're building the different inventory items. And then of course, we're able to, you know, kind of draw comparisons and, you know, throughout this database. So tabletops and legs go into making a table and uh, seats and legs, the same legs in this case, go into making a bar stool. So that's basically, you know, how this is set up. That's the parts. Again, then parts connects to the BOM or the bill of materials. And here we also connect to our inventory. So this is basically saying, look, when we make a bar stool, we're, we're going to need a seat, one of them, and we're going to need legs, three of them. When we make a table, we need a tabletop, one, we need legs, four, right? And then, you know, that all rolls into our uh, inventory. And so we've got a little description here. It links to the bill of materials. And then when we sell something, it's coming from the finished inventory. But when we get supplies, that's the next table over, that's connecting to parts, right? So again, I'm going a little quickly because we've talked about this particular setup before for inventory management. Uh, and I'll definitely include a link to this video as well. But, uh, you know, still need to do the high level just so that we can make sense of all of this moving forward. So when we, uh, on our supplies table, we're recording received items. So we're saying, hey, we just got some new parts on this day. We received 20 new seats. On this day, we received tabletops. We got 10 of them. And so those quantities are being you know, summed up at the parts level. And that's how, if I were to flip back over here, we can tell how many total pieces you know, we've received over time. And then similarly, we're looking to see how many different pieces we've sold. And so then we can do a, a difference of those two to know how many parts are in stock. And this is where the relational database part comes to play. Because in a relational database, when we sell a new piece, then of course it's going to impact our parts. And we wanna know, well, how many parts did we have in stock on at the end of business on Monday or end of business on Tuesday? And we never get access to that again with this thing constantly updating and changing in real time. So let's take an example. Right now we have 10 tabletops because you see that we've never sold a tabletop or a table. So let's record a sale for a table and see how this changes. So we've got a new sale here and let's say that we sold one here and we sold a table. Let's say we sold two tables and let's say that we sold two bar stools. So when I make those changes and I enter that information here, when we go back to our parts, we would expect to see that our parts in stock are now less, right? So because we sold two tables, we lost two tabletops. And in each table that we sell, that's you know four legs. And so legs has gone down significantly as well. And in addition to that, we also need to, need to account for the legs that went into the bar stools that we sold. So obviously our parts in stock have changed, but we don't necessarily have a running tab of where they were before. So that's what this is all about. So we're gonna be leveraging the new feature from Airtable called Airtable Automations 
to grab some historical data and memorialize it at a point in time. So we've built here our, a new uh, table and we, we have two different views that we're gonna leverage here. We've got an all records view and then a snapshot automation. The snapshot automation view is using a fancy little formula that is going to tell the automation to trigger and I'll showcase that in a moment. But in essence, what we're doing is we're saying, look, we want to know how many tabletops, seats, and legs we have at this particular point in time. So if I pick today, once I do that, then you notice that our automation just fired and it entered in all of that information for us. So a couple of things that are going on behind the scenes here that we need to address. First and foremost, we have our now formula. The now formula is just saying, that we're looking at the date time of this particular date. And if it's within 10 minutes of now, that is, uh, you know, this actual moment in time, the live moment in time, if it's within 10 minutes, then we're gonna output now. And so you see that that output is only happening in one case. At the time of my recording right now, it's, uh, you know, 3.36 on 8.30. And so because this falls within 10 minutes, it's triggering. So that is our triggering mechanism. And if you look at our snapshot automation, you'll notice that we have applied a filter that says only trigger this automation when now is what's showing up in this field. So it's essentially combining a formula with a filter for a view in order to get this automation to trigger. So that's the first big part here. Now, the other big part is that we have linked this record to all of our parts. And by grouping this table or excuse me by grouping by this particular field then it makes it easy so that when we just add a new record it automatically has the same linked relationships if we start carrying new parts as a company we need to make sure to add them here and uh, and bring them in as different fields as well and the value in that is that we then have these lookup tables that are looking up the current you know the current uh, amount of these particular items so in this case, it's saying, well, we're looking at parts and we want to bring back the parts in stock for tabletops, or we want to bring back the parts in stock for seats or the parts in stock for legs. You get the idea. And once we have that, then of course, this information can be written over here. And because of the fact that this is a lookup field, it gets constantly updated with changes in the database. And so the value of having it written to a number field is that this number now will not change as our database goes through updates. So let's take a quick example one more time, flip back to our sales, and let's suppose we sold more tables. So 11114 can be this order, and we'll say that we're selling another table. And let's just do one simple table here. So of course we know that our database would show that we have reduced our parts by four legs and one tabletop. If you look at our stock here, you can compare that our seat quantity is 25, which shows up and is identical to the looked up seat quantity. Uh, but the tabletop is in fact down one because we, moved, we sold one more table and the legs quantity was previously 27 and is now 23. So if we wanna build that automation again or grab that snapshot, all we have to do is apply the proper date here. And these numbers here are automatically getting updated here. And this is all thanks to the new Airtable automations feature in the background. So as you might imagine, we've built an automation in this database. It triggers off of a record entering the view. Again, that's that snapshot automation view where we built that fancy formula to make sure that we're bringing in new records as they apply. And then we are using the lookup fields and bringing in the data from the lookup fields and writing it to the number fields so that the number in this tabletop Q field gets written into the tabletop quantity and the seat Q field gets written into the seat quantity. And so this way we're able to keep a historical running tally of our database at different points in time. That way we still have the same advanced functionality of a relational database under the surface but we're also able to go back and see where we were at certain points, which can help us make important business decisions when stocking or you know, otherwise analyzing where our, the health of our business is.
As always, I hope you found that to be very helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, swing on by our website and check out all the resources we've put together. We have a free Airtable crash course that will get you up to speed quickly and easily in Airtable. And we also offer some paid services, including hourly consultations with our experts. We have some online group coaching programs and courses. And for the very advanced needs, we can build a bespoke project for you from scratch. So swing on by, and I look forward to connecting with you soon.